Okay, I'm pretty excited about our boat speed uh, session coming up, uh, sessions coming up on Friday and Saturday. Um, and I thought about whether I should actually only give you the theory um, that I understand after you felt it. Um, but of course, you no one's a blank slate. You've felt some of this stuff before and maybe it'll help you feel it um, uh, on Friday and Saturday. Um, Anyway, without further ado, so first maybe I'll talk about outhaul because it's uh, a bit more simple what's happening with the outhaul. So um, the sail has a shape cut into it so that it's um, the way it's sewn, it's supposed to have more draft. Um, so draft is the, the, um, the space between the sail fabric and the cord. Um, and you can think of the cord, this green line as the boom. Uh, if the boom didn't bend, uh, so it has it has more draft cut into it at the front um, of the sail uh, than at the back of the sail. Um, and I'll get into why um, you want that, why that's a good thing. Uh, but as you release outhaul, you uh, get more draft. Uh, the more draft you get, the more power you get. Um, so uh, outhaul is a, is a coarse adjustment. Um, you, if you adjust the outhaul a little bit, you can really feel it, uh, the change in amount of power in your, in your boat. Um, sometimes if you ease your outhaul a bit, some people report that they can point a bit higher. Um, part of that could be to do with a smooth entry on the sail, but um, I think it's probably that when you have more power, it presses uh, firmly on the centerboard and the centerboard resists and starts working better. Um, so maybe this boat might um, point better than this boat uh, because it has more power so the centerboard is more efficient. Um, now if you get greedy and let the sail off too much um, on the upwind, and uh, I'm, so far I'm just talking about the upwind, um, the pressure from the sail, uh, from the air on the sail, starts to drag a bulge in the sail backwards. So the battens keep their shape at the back, but the draft gets sort of pulled backwards if the outhaul is quite loose and the wind is quite strong. So if you ever notice this, this sort of pocket in the back of your sail, um, uh, that on the upwind, that's bad. Um, that uh, takes you from having the force um, in the sail pulling forwards uh, to the force pulling not sideways, but even maybe a touch backwards um, relative to the cord, not relative to the boat. Uh, so here, remember, the boom isn't center line on a laser. So even if this was pulling a little bit backwards, it still could slightly be pulling the boat forwards. Um, but I'll get into that in a, in a little bit. So um, a very flat sail uh, tends to keep its, its uh, sail cut shape a little better. Uh, so a, a tighter outhaul keeps the shape a little better than a looser outhaul and a very loose outhaul tends to bulge backwards here. Okay, now I'll move on to Cunningham. And first let's ignore these, uh, pretend I didn't draw this in for a second. So if you pull a whole bunch of Cunningham on a sail without a whole bunch of kicker, um, then you get these creases up at the front of the sail. Uh, a time that you've probably seen this is if you had your sail set up for heavy wind and then you released your kicker before you released your Cunningham. So when the kicker, when the boom bounces up like this, um, these wrinkles come into the sail. So um, the Cunningham does a couple of things. Uh, it bends the top of the mast um, because the top of the mast is weaker than the bottom of the mast, so that our top sections are thinner uh, than our bottom sections. Um, I'm trying to I'm trying to think what I should talk about first. So let let's talk about uh, normal um, 
Mark II, a full rig sail. If you have a lot of kicker on, so now imagine this boom a little a little lower down, and a and a, a lot of Cunningham on as well, that really bends the mast. And what you get is this crease here. Um, so on the Mark I full rig sails, you used to get this crease that would go right to the um, the join the join in the between the top and bottom sections um, and you would get that if your top section was bent or if you didn't have enough tape uh, and so your uh, top section was was uh, angled a little bit because of the looseness there uh, if you hadn't taped the connection between the top and the bottom section um, but in the mark ii sail they've cut it in such a way that the the whole leech of the sail um, can actually sort of fold outwards and you get this weird uh, effect. Do I have a marker? Um, where the leech is actually, um, so you've got like a, um, where the crease is in the sail, uh, the back edge of the sail has bent outwards. And so you get like a mini sail at the front of the sail and then the battens are just sort of parallel to the wind. Um, so you open up the sail so much that you really just using a little bit of the sail. Um, so that's easily visualized on the Mark II sail. Um, but of course it happens on all uh, unstayed um, sails uh, to different extents in different ways. Um, but in the in the radial sail, you actually have to pull the in heavy heavy wind. You have to pull the kringle um, or grommet, uh, this metal thing here, down uh, beside the boom uh, to get enough bend in the mass to really open the back edge of the sail. Uh, so that's um, when you are sailing along in heavy wind, and it's very, very difficult to get the telltales flying on the sail. Um, if you bear off enough to get the windward telltale flying, you're just way too overpowered. Um, what you can do is pull more Cunningham on. That takes the power out of the top of the sail because the top of the sail sort of pivots open. Um, and then because you there's less leverage against you, so you've reduced some power, but you've reduced the power that had the most leverage against you, um, it makes it easier to, uh, to hike and uh, easier to uh, bear off a little bit more um, and get good flow on your sail. Uh, so by spilling wind out of the top of the sail, you reduce drag on the sail. Um, if, on the other hand, you don't open the top and your battens are hooking, um, that ge would generate more power, uh, except that you're then wasting that power uh, by not angling the sail properly into the wind. So what I mean by that is that you start pinching or pointing too close into the wind. So if you point too close into the wind, the sail luffs, and you actually haven't um, haven't hooked, haven't bent the uh, the wind as much as you wanted. Uh, so your automatic reaction to being overpowered um, is uh, actually probably to have the boat healed. But let's pre let's pretend that we all always manage to keep our boats flat. Um, if you manage to keep your boat flat and you're overpowered, you usually point too close into the wind. Um, so that's not pointing too close into the wind is not a good way of depowering because your centerboard stops working and then you slide sideways. Um, so the best way is to to bend the mast, open the top of the sail. Cunningham is really good for doing that. Um, but the Cunningham and the kicker, um, and if I call it the boom vang, boom vang and kicker are the same things um, uh, in. Uh, North America, we usually say boom bang. In England, they say kicker. Um, but kicker seems like it was more logical to use because uh, Swedish, it's kik. Uh, so one of the... Uh, so the, the kicker and the Cunningham balance each other out. 
So if you release the kicker a lot, you get these ugly wrinkles. Um, and then you can release the Cunningham to get rid of them. If you pull a whole bunch of kicker without pulling much Cunningham, you get maybe the uh, orange uh, shape of the sail here. So you get a, uh, a sail that doesn't have too much, or the, the draft, um, the maximum point of depth in the sail is pretty far back. And if you pull the Cunningham on, you can move that maximum point of draft a little bit further forward. And I'll tell you why that's uh, useful in a second. So that's one good thing that the Cunningham does. Uh, that's only good on the upwind. Um, there's no point in bringing the draft forward on the downwind. And then the other good thing that um, the Cunningham does, as we mentioned before, is opening the leech. So um, if we take this orange sail and this uh, blue sail and separate them out, um, this uh, would be the blue sail with the draft further forward. Um, and this would be the orange sail uh, with the draft further back. Uh, so um, one way of thinking about the sail, and none of these models of sails are totally perfect. Um, there are some really cool computer models um, uh, now that can visualize these in different ways. Um, you basically, uh, anyway, this is a this is a, a rough and dirty way of understanding how um, sales work. Uh, the more draft, uh, the further you are from the cord, uh, the more force you create there. So um, I've drawn the biggest, uh, maybe I haven't, but I've tried to draw the biggest arrow at the deepest part of the sail. And then as the sail gets closer to the cord, I've drawn smaller and smaller arrows. Um, so if you add all these arrows together, some of these arrows are point pulling a little bit backwards uh, and some of them are pulling a little bit forwards and they sort of cancel out. But with this shape, you get a more forwards arrow. Um, uh, with this shape, um, it's more symmetrical, uh, not totally symmetrical, but it's more symmetrical. So you get the sum of all these little black arrows being a little further back. Um, so on the downwind, this is great. You don't need Cunningham on the downwind pulling the draft forward. And you also don't need to uh, get your leech to open, which the Cunningham also does. So Cunningham is not helpful on the downwind, um, but the Cunningham can help you get the, the draft forwards like this on the upwind. Um, a possible downside is here you see I've drawn this pretty extremely, so there's a very sharp curve. Um, and so you might not be able to get the, the wind to attach nicely to this sail. The wind might just ignore this sharp curve here and just come in, come in like that. And then you don't get this effect quite as nicely. So, um, but real sails don't actually look like that. Uh, you should, you should lay your sail over, um, uh, lay your boat over with the sail up. Uh, and all your sail controls on and look down the sail. It's, it's surprisingly flat, um, depending on how much outhaul you have. Um, okay, so uh, this is probably familiar to many of you. So if we take this arrow, uh, actually even this arrow, um, this is a, uh, a more realistic sail shape here. Um, so the orange arrow is the force created from the draft in the sail from how much uh, the sail has bent the wind uh, and is sucking the wind forward. Um, and then uh, that wants to pull the boat this way, uh, but we have a centerboard um, and the centerboard, uh, if you're also moving forwards as well as sideways, will create uh, resistance, another force, and it creates resistance perpendicular to it. And then for those of you who did high school math, um, you add the two vectors tip to tail, um, and you get this tiny little orange forwards force. Um, so you harness a whole bunch of uh, force from the sail, you cancel a whole bunch of it out from the centerboard and rudder, and you're left with this little forwards force. So because you have such big forces canceling each other out, anytime you can make an efficiency, like a little percentage of the orange 
um, arrow, uh, if it was slightly better angle forward, um, or uh, if it was, you know, 10% bigger or something like that, that has a significant effect on this tiny little arrow, um, uh, the, the forwards force. Uh, so I've drawn another, another one here. Um, if you have a very flat sail, cause it's super windy, um, in the black, um, and then you, uh, so you'd have, let's say this black arrow is the force coming from this a black sail, and then you let the sail out a little bit with a whole bunch of kicker on, um, then your uh, sail actually produces force in a more forwards direction. Look at that, much more forwards. Uh, this isn't a significant, a very big uh, ease of the sail. Um, but I've drawn the orange sail cloth inverted a little bit here, uh, because when you let the sail out, if you don't turn the boat, and that's a big if, uh, if you don't turn the boat and you let the sail out, you luff the sail a little bit. So the little force that you have harnessed is pulling more forwards, but there's less. So I should have drawn this black arrow bigger. And then also remember that whenever your sail is slightly inverted here, or whenever the luff of the sail, um, it, uh, the luff telltale is not flying. Um, so here, uh, it's not flying, maybe on the black sail it is flying. Um, so whenever the luff isn't working, that's extra drag in the wind. Um, so just be aware that that isn't ideal. Okay, so we've talked about outhaul, Cunningham, now let's come to kicker. Um, so uh, let's say if you, lay, if you lay a sail down on the ground, um, it's all of the corners of it are round. Um, uh, and if you have a mast uh, laying on the ground, it should be straight. Uh, hopefully, if it's not straight, you should try to bend it back. Um, it's surprising how much you can bend these aluminum spars. Uh, um, so if you slide a straight mast into this bent mast sleeve, <laughs> this one isn't nearly as nice as the ones I prepared, um, then you, the extra fabric from this bend has to go somewhere. So because we live in a 3D world, it goes into depth. It creates draft. But if you bend, um, bend the mast, so you'd stuff this straight mast into the sail, it created a whole bunch of, uh, of dis, um, draft. If you bend that sail, um, sorry, bend that mast, then the sail loses the shape that you'd added to it um, by putting a straight mast in. If you lay this curved sail down on the flat ground, you will actually notice that um, it wrinkles a little bit. So there is a little bit of draft just sewn into the sail. Um, they, they sew, uh, curved sections together. This is a horrible exaggeration. Um, but if you, uh, sew, sew this edge to that edge, um, you would get some shape sewn into the sail. So, um, if you bend the, uh, mast all the way to the luff curve angle, um, you're left with only the amount of um, draft that was cut into the sail. Um, so in a lot of boats, that's a sweet spot when you get the, you match your luff curve. In the laser, not so much. In the laser, um, if you match your luff curve, you have an incredible amount of kicker on, um, which would be fast in an incredibly windy situation. Um, so that would be the, the red one if you have a very, a whole bunch of kicker. Um, uh, and that's sort of reproduced by your being block to block here, if, you're, if your sail is touching. Um, if you have a, even more kicker than that, maybe your blocks are at a little bit of an angle, but for, for now, because that's, that's an uncommon situation, let's just say that um, the red drawing is when you're block to block. Um, and then let's say that you have a lot of kicker on, but not that much. 
Um, so when you release to spill spill the sail, um, the boom goes out. Uh, so so that's good. Um, the boom goes out, but it also goes up. Uh, so it goes up and out. Um, unless you have an incredible amount of kicker on, the boom goes a little bit up. So when the boom goes up, the mass straightens, you get more draft, um, you get more power. Uh, but if you let it out enough um, and you have kicker on, then you spill more power than you gain. What you can do in light uh, or light medium wind, um, let's say five, six knots, um, seven knots, depending on your body weight, um, you can have a very loose kicker, and then what you can do is sheet up, because um, we're always talking about sheet out, let the sail out, but it, instead you're letting the sail up. So you're, here your main sheet block will be up there. So you straighten, you let the mass straighten quite a bit, um, and you get a whole bunch of power in the sail. Um, and so remember that power uh, comes from the excess fabric here. So this fabric goes into the whiteboard and then comes back out. You actually get quite a bit of hook on your leech. So if you ease the, um, the sail up with a loose fang in medium-ish wind, you actually get, um, you, I find that you can point quite high. Um, so if you're underpowered, um, you can ease the sail up uh, get more power, and if you, if you don't let the boat heal, and you don't let the boat luff, um, you can lean into that power, and you can feel the leech engage, and you can point quite a bit higher, um, but if you have a whole bunch of kicker on, then when you ease the sail, um, it does come up a little bit, but it mostly goes out, and just spills the wind, so in underpowered conditions, a loose kicker, um, lets you power up and point higher. Uh, that's sad news because that means that in underpowered conditions, you always want a whole bunch of tension on the back of the main sheet here, which means your traveler is going to ride up. And so you have to fiddle around to try to get that traveler to st traveler block to stay in the corner of the boat, which is a design flaw of the laser, if you ask me. But um, yes, it's worth getting the traveler to stay out in the corner of the boat so that you can release the kicker, add depth to the sail, which adds power and hooks the leech and adds height. Um, so in, in medium wind, if you've been letting the sail up, uh, you might get a gust of wind and actually pull the sail in to depower. So you're flattening the sail um, uh, and hiking. Now, if you get an even bigger puff, then you might have uh, you would either have to pinch uh, point too high into the wind, which isn't very good, or let the sail out so much past this blue point, so it goes up and then out. Um, so that's not particularly good either. So uh, maybe if you pull the sail in to depower, you then reach for the kicker, snug the kicker on, so that if you have to, uh, if you have even more power, you then let it out again. So in the transition, um, uh, maybe, I don't know, seven, eight knots, uh, and it really depends on how big you are and which sail you're sailing, um, full rig uh, or radial, um, you, you're, you're playing a lot with, do I sheet up? Do I sheet up? Do I sheet out? Um, uh, in light wind, it's all about sheeting up. Uh, and then in very heavy wind, it's all about sheeting out. So that's why we're always saying more kicker, more kicker in heavy wind, because whenever you release the mainsail and it goes up, that's inefficient. Um, the more it goes up before it goes out, um, the more you're sort of fighting yourself for the first couple of inches. Um, yeah, so uh, when you're feeling your kicker, um, when I'm, I'm, I'm forcing you to sail with not enough or too much kicker, I want you to think about where, what angle you're able to point and how much power there is in the boat. Um, so those are the two, the two big things to notice. Where am I heading um, and how much load, how much, how hard do I have to hike uh, here?
uh, relative to how I did before I adjusted the sail control. When you're playing with your Cunningham, if it is uh, windy, um, and I think we would only do this if it was overpowered for most of the sailors, um, I want you to think about how easy it is to find the groove. Um, so by groove, uh, I mean your perfect close hauled angle. So most of us, most of the time, sail <laughs> at this angle when it would actually be better to sail at that angle. Ooh, that's probably not a very good boat. So you should point on your perfect close hauled course and not above it. Um, so uh, the Cunningham allows you to point on your perfect close hauled course where you get the most power without stalling the sail. Um, an easier way of saying that is lets you get your telltales flying. Um, uh, so if you can't get your telltales flying um, without healing the boat over too much, uh, try pulling more Cunningham on. Um, yeah. And then uh, you talked about outhaul, Cunningham, uh, sorry, uh, kicker, Cunningham. And then for the outhaul, uh, I want you to be feeling uh, what angle you're sailing. So I guess that would be more seeing, looking for what angle you're sailing and feeling how heavy the boat feels. Um, so when you have... Uh, the draft pulling really sideways, you're fighting forces without any extra forward. Um, so if you're hiking really hard and you don't feel like you're going any faster, that could be that your outhaul is too loose. Maybe pull your outhaul back in and then release some kicker so that when you sheet out, the boom goes up a bit. Or maybe pull the outhaul a little bit tighter to keep this nice profile uh, with the draft a bit further forward than it is here, uh, and then release your Cunningham. Uh, so releasing the Cunningham can close the leech a little bit. And when you hook the leech a little bit, the boat will point higher, uh, point a little bit higher um, too. Anyway, so there are some thoughts uh, about sail theory. Um, to think about along with our boat speed, boat feel session.